Hello, baby gangsters. This is Calvin, also known as Omer, and this is the turnabout for tomorrow in my first ever playthrough of Dual Destinies. No one esca can escape their past. We know a lot about not being able to escape your past in the Ace Attorney games. What is this? Oh, Athena! What a f what a visual! All that blood. The sins we've committed, and the sadness we've caused. Yeah, this sword. Wait, Blackwell. So it's Blackwell's sword. Wait, so this would. So this was seven years ago, right? Is this what we're getting at? Look at the blood. What the hell, Blackwell? The music's incredible. No matter how far we run, our past remains. As ever present as the moon in the sky. Oh, and there's Apollo from the start of the freaking game. There's our man. Oh my god, but like, so Athena has like more of a relation to Blackwell than when we thought. Look at this visual, it's such a good visual. Holy hell, this, this case is going to be crazy. I can feel it. I can feel it. I just feel bad for poor Athena, man. Like, what the hell? All that blood, it looms in wait for the day when we are forced to face it. And again, we know all about this. Oh, look at this. Closing in on the trial, like the actual the, the, the courtroom. But only in doing so can we truly make peace and move on in hope towards tomorrow. Yeah. I mean, that's the thing. Like, I, I, I kept saying it there. More than anyone else, Phoenix knows that you have to face the past. We've seen so many people not being able to do that. Even ourselves, as long as you have to face your own past. December 20th, 1.23 p.m., right anything agency. But holy hell, all that blood. All of that blood. They took Athena from the courtroom straight to the station. She's probably being questioned at this very moment. Oh man, look at these two. Apollo and Athena are both gone. They're both gone from the right anything agency at the moment. After this past year, I took for granted those two, those two would always be here. Yeah, I mean, that that's the thing. It's, you never know how to appreciate things until they're gone, really. Or, you, or sometimes you never learn to truly appreciate things. I think ever, I think some people can, but it's very difficult, right? You truly realize how much you appreciated something once it leaves. But now Apollo has gone off on his own to seek his own truth. And my pursuit of the truth only ended up with Athena becoming the new suspect. Yeah. Some boss I turned out to be. Oh, Phoenix. Oh, Trucy. It's even quieter in here than usual. And they're so used to, like, Apollo being loud and Athena being crazy, you know what I mean? Yeah. It seems so empty too. I can imagine. Can you imagine how hollow it must sound? Right? Like how like how you go from being like having like probably because the thing is if if you have four people in a small area, there's gonna be a lot of chatter, and that chatter is sometimes very comforting. Sometimes it can be annoying, but like again, you don't realize how important that chatter is to yourself until it's gone. I just don't get it, Daddy. All of your reasoning during the trial seemed perfectly solid. Yeah. And I still believe it was. At least based on what we know. But now Athena is the one who's being accused. Yeah. It's huge. During the trial for the bombing and the murder uh, that occurred at the Cosmo Space Center. The lighter, yeah. The lighter used by the real culprit was found. The lighter proved to be defendant Solomon Starbuck innocent. Yep. Yeah. But, but, but Athena's prints were found on it instead. And she was subsequently arrested for the murder. But Athena couldn't have done it. It just doesn't make any sense. No, none of it does. I've been racking my brain, but I just can't figure it out. Where's the flaw in my reasoning? What have I got wrong in this case? 
You know, Daddy, if Athena was here, she wouldn't just be sitting around thinking. She'd be out doing so. Yeah, she would be out the door right away. She wouldn't even wait for everyone. You're going to defend Athena, right, Daddy? He better. Of course I will. And thanks, Trucy. I need that push. Yeah, sometimes you just need someone to tell you to talk you into it. Um, really, yeah, like, Athena would be already out the door. If it was one of us, uh, who were, like, up against uh, a creek with no paddle, she would be, like, rushing to hand the paddle to us. Trucy's right, the trial is tomorrow. There's no time to waste. If I'm going to prove Athena's innocence, I better get out there and find some evidence. Off we go, then. We're on the hunt for evidence that'll prove Athena's innocence. Great. Before we go, I better tidy up the evidence I have on hand. I, again, I love this kind of, uh, uh, this mechanic. But we're transferring a trial into the next case. It rarely happens. Now, here's the thing. It rarely happens, like, right back to back. Um, or maybe I'm wrong on that. I could be wrong on that. Yeah. Because in Trials and Tribulations, it's a perfect example of how, like, the whole, nearly every single, not every trial, but nearly, like, most of the trials that are, like, the most heavy, heavily story-impacted trials that are personal to Phoenix, that are personal to a character in the game, um, like, the first, the fourth, and the fifth, at the very least, all have a deep connection to each other, right? Like, that's kind of generally what happened in Trials and Tribulations as well. Um, so I think that's, that's what's happening kind of here as well. It's actually a really cool storytelling technique. Uh, where it kind of creeps up on you, right? It's like you're not expecting it to get this heavy or this deep because it doesn't just like all smack you in the face at once with all the information. It slowly trickles everything out, right? And they've been kind of hinting at Apollo leaving throughout this whole thing. They've been hinting at Trucy's past through this whole thing. Not Trucy, sorry, it's Athena's past. And now we have this. Trucy's past is just golden, you know, the golden girl. Athena's probably still in the middle of uh, being questioned. So Trucy's right. The thing to start with is uh, talking to people at the Space Center. Right, okay, so I still would like, like, yeah, I know, I understand, I understand. Like, if she's being questioned, we can't talk to her. I'd just love to see her, to see if she's doing okay. This Trucy's little jump is also so adorable. Uh, let's talk to Trucy about stuff, because we haven't talked to her a lot in this game. I still can't believe Apollo really left us. It was so sudden. Maybe he's got tired of being my assistant for my magic tricks. Never, Trucy. Never. I don't think it's your fault, Trucy. But I made him clean the toilet a lot. Maybe we could, we, maybe we could let up on that. You know what I mean? <laughs> I mean, we go bring the newspaper. <laughs> Trucy, I think there's like, I think there would be a difference. Like, I think there's a difference of like, you know, if practically like, even though you don't know each other as siblings, I feel like you have a very sibling relationship. So him being like, hey, go get the newspaper. You'd be like, go get the newspaper. To me, if someone asked me to do that, I had a relationship like apologies with you. I'd find it endearing. It was my fault. I just know it. Oh, Apollo. I really don't think it was your fault, Trucy. But I didn't realize Apollo was wearing so many hats around here either. Yeah, it's one of those things where it's like, it's really difficult to see, like, you know, it's like, we, they didn't realize Apollo was doing this many things until he was gone. Because those things aren't getting done probably as much anymore. You're gonna have to clean the toys yourself. Yeah, I think it's different. I think that the, it's, it's a different feeling. If Phoenix asks you to clean the toilet, it's a different feeling than Trucy, if that makes sense. Like, if Trucy asks you to clean the toilet, it's like, that's, it's true, it's Trucy. Like, you know what I mean? Trucy would ask you to do the weirdest things anyway, like, you know what I mean? And she's, you're, you're, she sees you as like, and she doesn't see it as a disrespect thing, I don't think, you know, either. I'm not saying Phoenix does either, but I'm saying it's probably different when your boss asks you to clean the toilet, right? It's like, it's like a little bit, it's like, especially someone who's like in the same profession as you, it's kind of like, we're both lawyers, you know, and you're asking me to clean the toilet. I say it would be weird. Um, but I think from Trucy, I don't think he sees Trucy as anything bad whatsoever. Any ideas? How could they suspect Athena? It's just ridiculous. It must be some kind of conspiracy. A conspiracy, huh? Well, it certainly is some kind of mistake, that's for sure. First of all, we have to bust Athena out of the detention center. I agree, Trucy. Let's break her out. Then we have to chase down the people who framed her. We'll sneak around the world from Kiev to Carolina with the fuzz hot on our tail. <laughs> Trucy, I, here's the thing. I know she's like, you know, such a, a, a kidder sometimes. Trucy would actually love this. Isn't that exactly the same plot as uh, the movie you watched the other day? That's okay. That's amazing. That's amazing, she picked up, she just took uh, the idea from a movie. That's brilliant. So to go back to the Space Center, Trucy... Wait, is Trucy come with us? Are you come with us, Trucy? Please, please say Trucy's coming with us. That would be, be the greatest Christmas gift ever, and it's only uh, September. Uh, December 20th, Cosmo Space Center. Entrance. So I changed the setting. Um... But I think, yeah, if to wait time, I thought that would reduce the wait time, because sometimes you, you're, I'm standing there doing like, I think it was 1.5 seconds, maybe it was 1 seconds, I don't know. Um, yeah, but I think it just, it, that doesn't change anything. 
Oh, there he is, Yuri Cosmos. Director Cosmos, do you have a minute? Here's the thing, I mentioned last time in, in a text form that I think that Yuri Cosmos definitely didn't care about the Space Center, but ended up hurting the Space Center to his, like, avid care. Um, it's always, like, very jarring when someone, like, commits a large amount of perjury in the court, and then you see them the next day just hanging out. <laughs> you know what I mean? Whatever. Like, he's not a danger to society, I don't think, uh, at this, so, like, it's like, okay, whatever. And he is, like, a very funny character. But, it's, you know, do you, do you guys agree with, like, like, it doesn't matter who which character it is. It's like, always weird to see him, like, the next day, like, after they, like, committed a large amount of perjury. Uh, Director Cosmos, do you have a minute? Uh, Galactic Schooner, full speed ahead! I wonder if he's not a fan of talking to us anymore after what happened. He scooted away. Trucy's with us! His expression changed the instant he saw you, Daddy. Yeah. Well, I dragged his name through the mud pretty good... At the trailer today, yes, and we know that uh, the Space Center name and Yuri takes his name very seriously. So what we did was basically make him feel as though he wasn't as important as he actually was. In other people's eyes, he's now a liar to a lot of people. Um, I still think he's a fun character. You know what I mean? I still think he's a fun character. Uh, so, like, I don't really have any problem with him, being, like, you know, being up and about. It doesn't really bother me. We have it already. Okay, so she... I wonder if it's going to be a thing where no one wants to talk to us after what happened. Like, that could be the case. Because now they probably don't trust us. Because we, like, unearthed this crazy, um, conspiracy. Uh, December 20th, Cosmo Center, uh, boarding lounge. We were here only yesterday. Oh, hey. Mr. Starbuck, you've been released, huh? That's good. Yep, and I came straight here. This is all thanks to you and your team, Mr. Wright. Thank you. You give me a second chance to fly into space again. I can't thank you enough. Except... <sighs> What's wrong? I thought uh, he'd be happy to get be acquitted. As I was coming out of the detention center, I saw Miss Sykes getting brought in. He saw Athena? I was at a loss for words. I didn't know what to say, so the poor girl to the poor girl. And then you know what? She flashed a peace sign at me. Oh, of course she did. Of course she did. Congratulations on your acquittal, she said. Now you can go back into space someday. She is like the most like understanding. Like she like she is one of the most empathetic characters we've ever had in this game. Really is. That sounds like Athena. I can just picture it. See now Phoenix is picturing everything to do with Athena all the time. And he's gonna be picturing I'd say he's gonna do the same with Apollo. Because what's happening now is again, they're not here. You know, it's very different. Because like I think, you know, it's like, it's, it's, you don't talk about people as much. Well, I do, you know, I do. I talk, I talk about friends, you know, when you, you want to praise them and stuff like that. But I feel like, you know, you're going to talk about people more when you know that you can't access them. You know what I mean? You, you know what you can't, you know what I mean? If that makes sense. But I saw her eyes. They were red and swollen from crying. Oh, Jesus, no. Not our girl. She's got to be suffering. She must be so worried. And yet she went out of her way to be nice and give me that big smile. She did back her own, she held back her own tears so she could give someone else a smile. It's times like these the lawyers have to force their biggest smiles. That's so Athena. The way they're saying this, like, they're just like, re like that's so her, that's so her. Hammering home who she is as a character. There's no question about it. That girl is innocent. Please, Mr. Wright, you have to make sure she goes free. And then they can put me in prison instead. I don't mind. No, 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 we're not going to do that. Everyone's going to go free. We can't have that either, Mr. Starbuck. Everyone's going to go free. Don't worry, Mrs. Starbuck. I'm going to give her the very best defense I can. I promise to get her acquitted. Just like I did for you. I know she'll be alright with you in her a corner. I know you'll never give up on her. Apollo is a fine boss to look up to. He does. So we're going to talk to you about some stuff about the murder. Oh yeah, getting, well he was like, you know, now he has a, probably a different perspective and everything. I think I believe Launchpad 1 was switched with the Space Museum. What could have made Director, uh, Director Cosmos do such a thing? Yeah, what the fog is the idea? Uh, I thought it was that he knew the bomb was going to go off, so he wanted them out of danger. Was that it? So there never was going to be a launch that day. Not from the very beginning. I wonder if Clay knew. I imagine he must have. Surely he would have noticed when he went on board to board the rocket. It's pathetic to think I was the only one who knew who got, uh, got taken in. But I guess that's about how it goes. When you're worth less than a space debris. Is he going to be alright, Daddy? His expression looks as dark as a black hole. Well, 
That's just how he is. The murderer. Mrs. Starbuck, do you remember anything about the murderer? Oh, really? I only saw a shadowy figure in the dark after all. Yeah, I guess that was a little too much to hope for. You know what's crazy? Since it's not Athena, and I know it's not Athena, I do not care. It's not Athena. Um, this is a, this is a pure murder mystery where we have to find the real killer. And while that is like what happens usually in Ace Attorney Trials, we have a killer who has been seen by people, who is standing there with a silhouette with a lighter and a knife in hand, and we don't know who it is yet after a case. It's very rare that happens. Hey, I heard something from the police, though. They said that they never did find the 10 caliber gun down in the trash chute. Just as I thought, the culprit must have carried it away with them when they escaped. So is the person you saw holding a gun Mr. Starbuck? Um, I couldn't really tell. But it wasn't Athena, right? Could you tell if the person was male or female, tall or short? I can't even tell you that much. And I'm useless. When the culprit opened the door and some light came in, I should have been able to see. The door. Yes. As I recall, they opened the door here as they made their escape. The door to launchpad one, right? Oh, I can't believe I'm Trucy, but this is so good. Yeah, except right now the door leads to the space museum. You mean the launch pad and the space museum are switched right now? Yeah, they're trying to investigate the theory you came up with in court. So they're recreating the conditions, huh? I'd like to see what's beyond that door now. Yeah. Mr. Starbuck, could you open this door for us? Sure, just let me have my print scanned here. Oh my god, here we go. Um, yeah, no, so great to have Trucy with us, really great. Switching the launch pads. Do the launch pads get switched uh, uh, back and forth a lot? Well, back when Space Museum was launched by 2, they used to switch the pads around at times. But these days, launch by 2 is only used as a tourist attraction. Uh, it's a tourist attraction, right? Right. Because, quite frankly, the Space Center needs the money. I hear you. Times sure are tough. Daddy, let's go check out what's behind the door. No problem, Trucy. I'm so happy to have Trucy with us. Sure, let's go. Hey. Why don't I come along? I can show you around. Sure. Hmm. The most suspicious thing I can see here. Green floors. What is this? A bathroom in the 50s? Um, no, I actually like green bathrooms, believe it or not. I wonder what these dead leaves are doing here. Maybe they're stuck to the bottom of somebody's shoes? There are lots of trees around the Space Center. She's right. It's a modern state-of-the-art building, but it's surrounded by trees. But I don't know. If they were stuck to the bottom of somebody's shoes, wouldn't they look more crushed up? These uh, don't look like they've been stepped on. Maybe there's some kind of secret hatch in the corridor and they came in that way? Not everything is set up like a magician stage, you know? But like, we could maybe take that theory and be like, maybe like they got in through like a window or a vent or something? Because they're not crushed up. Maybe it is like they got through like a ceiling or something. So this is another one of those devices for opening the door, huh? Yep. But this one doesn't require fingerprint verification. You just hit the button and open Sesame. So when you and Clay went through here, you didn't need to show your prints either? That's right, Trucy. Just like how the culprit didn't need to scan their prints. When they escape back out of the Space Museum corridor in the bo in boarding lounge... When they escape back out of the Space Museum corridor in boarding lounge 2... Launchpad 1 door lock updated. So this one doesn't need uh, one from this side. Okay, for a print application. Well, I don't see anything else that jumps out at me. And I imagine this corridor is built exactly like launchpad one, the Launchpad 1 corridor. Okay, so do we present something to him? Maybe the leaves? We don't even have the leaves. Um, or do we move to another park? Because we can move to... No, What what's happening here? Should we present something else to him? Maybe the lighter? Do you know anything with this piece of evidence? No. Sorry, I'm still useless. Uh... No, 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 it's alright. There's no need to get all depressed. It's okay. Uh, is this is Aura's statement. The propelled lighter in hand. We might as well present everything even if it's not going to work out. We can just fast forward to the ones that we, we don't, um, that aren't true. That aren't, that aren't worth it, I guess.
you never know. Um, this is the new piece of evidence we got, but I guess not. What about the knife? No? What about this? You know anything about this? That was the same thing. What you think? What do you think about this? Oh, here we go. Clay used to always cheer uh, cheerfully greet me in a loud voice. I did vocal exercises every morning, sometimes until he was a horse, right? Exactly. You could always hear him even through the wall. Hey. Wait a minute. Do you know Clay? No, but like, attracts like, as they say. But no, like attracts like, as they say. Apollo. Yeah, Apollo. Oh, he, he, he got Apollo's, um... He used Apollo's information, I suppose. So I guess we might go back to the... Uh, the entrance, maybe? Yeah. Uh, yeah, so he was thinking of Apollo. That's why he got it exactly right, because they're very, very like each other. December 28th, Cosmo Space Center entrance. He's back. Uh, curse to wreck you, Sully, my good name. Reverse course and full speed away! Director Cosmos, wait! He is he does not want to talk to us. I'll handle this, Daddy. Take that! Wait, what? What did you do? The mobility system has been compromised. Trucy's knife throw <laughs> We know we have Trucy back because just like when Trucy chased a criminal all the way down the street with her dog with a dog, you know for a fact that Trucy is not afraid to like commit a crime to stop a crime. <laughs> Well done, Trucy. And the streak continues. Trucy, that's awesome. You know what? I condone it. Ah, oh, there she is. Maybe she kept a closer watch on what tricks she's been uh, practicing. Nah, she did good. She did great. Look at her. She did great. Well done, Trucy. My dear old battleship, we fought many a skirmish together. It has been an honor. Daddy's gonna blow up that, th that thing up. Nah, I bet all the button will do is make it go haywire again. Yeah. Come on, just talk to us though, Yuri. I love the Trucy true knife at him. At the tires, at, at the least. Very well. I surrender as a prisoner of war. I expect to be treated honorably. So let's, uh, chat. Um, you're not, by the way, prisoner of war. If the judge says you're not gonna be in prison, like, we, we're we not gonna do anything to you either. Like, we, we don't have a, a massive issue with you. Switching the launch pads. Yeah, we just need to know about this. Director Cosmos, when you were talking in the court about switching the launch pads, you use your right to, to remain silent about the reason as to why. I'd like Director Cosmos to tell us why he switched the two launch pads to begin with. Uh, please. I can't. I exercise my right to remain silent. This was such a cool disheveled look. But I will say, my hands were tired. I was only doing what I could to keep my men from getting caught in that blast. <laughs> The center of the cosmos is sorry, the center of the cosmos is shrouded in mystery. But I don't have any secrets left. The music's so good. Now that my battleship has been destroyed, and I've been taken prisoner. Oh wait, wait, Cyclops? How many? Three. So this is like a, a mid-level freaking secret, yeah? I beg to differ. Looks like I'll have to undo a Cyclops if I want to get to the bottom of this. We could try. It's not always the easiest thing in the world. Look at these colors. Behind the switching of the launch pads. I want you to tell me everything you're hiding about the switching of the two launch pads. I refuse, you can't make me. I hold, can't hold, I can hold out longer than anyone. I'll be never like this when I'm old. Now let's see, where to start? This is how you explained your motive for switching the launch pad. You did it uh, to fool the bomber, to prevent the bombing, to save the astronauts. It was to save the astronauts, wasn't it? Yeah. Thanks to you switching the launch pads, the astronauts escaped injury from the blast. Instead, they safely boarded the museum's rocket far away from the asteroid explosion. My astronauts were ready to go out on an authentic adventure in space. How do you propose I had them board a fake rocket without them noticing? I agree you could have done it without help. For one, they would have figured it out the instant they stepped into the space museum. You figured you could fool Mr. Starbuck once he'd been drugged with his medication, but... Without the help of this person, it would have been impossible to pull off your plan. Clay? D did Clay know about it? Cause... Clay? Take that! You must have gotten Tyrant to help you. Yeah. He stole the tranquilizers from his mentor's locker and slipped, in, uh, slipped them to him. So he helped out? 
And then Mr. Mr. Starbuck in a daze, they boarded the replica rocket in the museum. Yeah, I saw an endless poor prisoner of war. How is he able to spit her out like that? Dude, I would be dead. This would be me two spins and I'm gone. If you really wanted to save the astronauts, like, so yeah, that's interesting. So Clay Tran gave him slipped in the drugs. That's crazy. So you must have known about it too somehow. If you really wanted to save the astronauts' lives, shouldn't you have just called off the launch? This is the thing. I'm very curious about this aspect of it. If I could have done that, you think I would have gone to, I would have gone to all the trouble. I guess he must have a compelling reason why he couldn't call it off. But how did you know to switch the pads in advance of the bombing incident? Well, that's because uh, I was warned in advance. Once I received the warning, it was my duty to ensure my astronaut's safety. But it was just a warning. It couldn't even have been a prank. Why did you believe it so completely? Because I went to one of those mediums that everyone's talking about these days. Oh? I didn't realize channeling was back in vogue. Besides, I thought it was yourself that got the warning via telephone. Yes, that's right. The bomber contacted me personally. My battleship is equipped with a special advanced communication system, you see. AKA a regular old telephone? Yeah, we'll let him dream. Let's let him dream. It's been a while. Planning another launch? So you haven't learned. I'll never forget the terror when I received that call. So you haven't learned. So did they involve themselves in the Hat 1 project as well? The bomber said, it's been a while, yeah. Seven years? That's enough to make you take the threat seriously? Perhaps Detective Cosmos took the threat so seriously. Because the Space Center had been involved in a bombing once before? Maybe. The culprit in the current case is the same person who was involved in this incident. The Hat 1, uh... The Hat 1 Miracle? Right? The Hat 1 Miracle. That epic story of a survival. People across the nation know it as a heroic tale of bravery. But in truth, it was an act of sabotage perpetrated by our current killer, wasn't it? That would make sense. So what does Blackwell have to do with this? Athena definitely has something to do with this as well with the idea of seven years. Um, you know, also, uh, what's her name? What's her, what's, it's, it's you, you, not, no, what's her name? It's, um, I keep, I keep blanking on her name. Aura, Aura Blackwell. Yeah, Aura Blackwell as well. Very few knew about the previous plot, so when the caller said it's been a while. So when the caller said it's been a while, you knew beyond a sh- I'm getting the two vo dialogues mixed up all to a day today. You knew beyond a shadow of a doubt that the danger was real and it wasn't a prank. Yeah, then they were trying to go each on next serviceman. Here we go, man. Yes. The Hat One Miracle was really a desperate battle against an act of sabotage. I even lost the life of one of my staff members in a fight. Sabotage murder? So this is the ugly truth behind the Hat One Miracle. So someone someone died in a fight? I let my guard down. I thought the saboteur had been caught and that the case was closed. Huh? Wait a minute. The murder at the Space Center seven years ago. This must be the person director Cosmos taught was the culprit. Who do you think was the culprit? So he said, I thought the saboteur had been caught and that the case was closed. I let my guard down. Oh, Blackwell. He thought it was Blackwell? Because seven years ago he was put in prison. Simon Blackwell, the murder suspect in the case that happened here seven years ago. The place and time of two incidents, the murder and the sabotage were the same. So you thought that he committed both crimes. But while Prosecutor Blackwell was behind bars, you got another threatening call. If the culprit this time is the same as seven years ago, then it isn't Simon Blackwell. Realizing that you were shaken, and that the true culprit's been running free all this time. <sighs> Which is terrifying. How do you keep seeing straight through me? That would terrify me, though. The idea that I thought that the person who killed one of my people was gone. In prison. And then you find out, clearly it wasn't. Great little, um, yeah, the, the, the cyclogs are interesting because when I first did them in, uh, in, was it, uh, Justice for All? Um, they were difficult. They were, they were strenuous because I was just like, I never did a mechanic like this before. Um, uh, but now I feel like two things happen. First of all, like, you know, you realize like the Ace Attorney audience is actually like a very understanding audience. And they love seeing people make mistakes. So like it, it takes the edge off. Like there's no nervousness about it, uh, getting the cyclogs. Before when I was doing the cyclogs first, I was like, I was like, oh man, people are going to think I'm dumb. 
Uh, but like, it doesn't really matter. Like it's, 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 it's more fun sometimes. Like it, it's more fun to like every once in a while have a little bit of a failure or to think things through, you know what I mean? Uh, and so that's why I kind of think the edge has been taken off the Cyclops because it's like, okay, just think it through. They usually give it the answers. They usually have the answers. And if they don't have the answers, you go off and find new answers and it's fine. Switching the launch pads. The reason why I just actually Cosmos won't talk about why you switched the launch pads is connected to the truth behind the Hat One miracle. I am so freaking nervous and excited. Like nerve sighted to find out what this is today. The sabotage and murder that happened at the Space Center seven years ago. Director Cosmos, tell us what tells what you're hiding. If you really want to understand the reason I decided to switch the launch pads. We'll have to start with the story of that horrible nightmare. From seven years ago. Okay. This is what we want. We want this. Like, we don't want it, but we want it. Seven years ago. You mean the so-called Hat One Miracle? The launch went smoothly, but once the ship entered our space, then the troubles began. It was all the handiwork of a certain person and their evil scheme. So Mr. Starbuck's traumatic experience wasn't accidental. Yeah, man. The, the trauma this guy is facing is so upsetting, because, like, you know, usually, like, it's, like, these little nervous, um, little things that people have, the tells that they have. His is, like, literally, he's trying to save his freaking ship. Look at this. Like, he's trying to save his ship. Music is really good here. Uh, not only that, but before launch, a very valuable piece of moon rock was stolen. Stolen? But that wasn't the worst of it. One of my staff members was murdered. That's probably, that's definitely worse. You okay, Trucy? I know you such an awful event was behind that exciting story of space hero heroism. All that in spite of the Space Center having very strict security in those days. All personal effects were examined thoroughly. Coming or going? Cool baseline. You couldn't even smuggle a winter or leaf through those checkpoints. Someone did. Someone legitimately did. Um, there was a leaf on the ground. But, yeah, that makes perfect sense why this would be hidden, like, with the, with this guy's personality, especially, like, what they would try to cover this up, because the, the, the reputation of him and the Space Center is very important to him. So, do you have any clue who was responsible for the sabotage? At the very least, I know it wasn't Simon Blackwell. I don't know enough to identify the true culprit. But it's clear what that person is. To put it simply. A spy? A spy? You mean somebody who infiltrates a foreign country? Carries out dangerous missions? And always gets the girl? <laughs> yes. We are going on this assumption now, everyone. Whether anyone likes it or not. Someone watching way too many late night movies. And you're letting her. That's your daughter. And you're letting her. You're letting her watch those movies. So... Well, I guess we we're talking about blowing up a rocket and stealing research material. I just think it's so funny her watching James Bond. <laughs> it's the like it's the last movie you'd see you think any teenager's watching, you know? It's not that surprising that a spy could be behind all it all. So let's talk about the spy then. Really interesting stuff happening here. Make no mistake, there's a cutthroat rivalry between nations in the space R and D race. I imagine it's actually like again, they're playing on actual real stuff that's happened with space races and stuff like that. Some try to do each other by any means possible, even deliberate obstruction. Seven years ago, we got a call before the launch, warning us of sabotage. Same MO as this time. Yes, and here I thought that perpetrator had been caught, but it looks like I was wrong. Prosecutor Blackwell seems more like a ninja than a spy, don't you think? Aren't ninjas and spies basically the same thing? No. No. Because ninjas could, uh, like, can perform assassinations as well. They're more based for combat. You know? Trucy was right, Phoenix. You gotta apologize now. But it's a good reason we failed to find a real spy. A massive cover-up by the government. Government officials were too embarrassed to admit that they allowed such a thing to happen in the hands of a spy. So the government covered this up. Don't tell me they made police rush to an investigation. That indeed, 
and then to cover up the sabotage, they cleaned up the story. And it was a hat one miracle. And that was how a miracle. Oh, so like this whole story of heroism makes sense why like he's not this hero we think he is. He's a victim. That's all he is. Is is Starbuck. You know what I mean? And, that, and not in a bad way. I don't mean like that. But he is a victim in this crime. But then seven years later, the same MO advance warning of sabotage. That must have been the director's reason for switching the launch pads. This is incredible. Absolutely incredible. Seven years ago, the spy gave you advance warning of their plans just like this time. That's what made you decide to switch the launch pads, wasn't it? That's right. The caller knew the facts of the case seven years ago despite the cover-up. So it's someone who was inside on the inside. They knew about the sabotage. The moon. Rock. The murder. And they said... You don't want things to go like they did seven years ago, do you? I mean, they thought of calling off the launch, but the government wouldn't let me. We don't give in to the likes of terrorists. We must proceed to our country's honor. The government... Wait, that's such a silly ass. That's such a silly thing, isn't it? Hey, we don't give in to likes of terrorists. Well, it's not about giving in. It's about, dude, like, your, your people are about to get freaking more dared. You know what I mean? Like, you know, people will die. It's quite a moving speech, actually. Moving? Really? Maybe if you're easily inspired by pol political talking points. Yeah, 100%. It is just that, Phoenix. But I knew the truth. We had been warned. Which meant that the danger was very real. And I knew there was no way to stop the spy. No matter what I did, they would find a way. That's why I stretched the large patch. And staged a moving rescue scene. Man, you were getting shot at for this. <laughs> Candace Iron came in and said, Hey, buddy. Bang, bang. First, I snuck into the center the night before and switched the launch pads. That way, the astronauts would come from the boarding lounge one to the space museum. Then I put a close for repair sign on the door to the launch pads in boarding lounge two. You did some normal visitors would enter, right? What else did you do? I enlisted the help of several staff members, including so several staff members, not just beautiful Clay Turan. We didn't let Mr. Starbuck in on it? He'd already been through enough, and he's no good at lying to keep a secret. Right. Yo, it's one of those tough things where, like, try to stop the trauma from happening again, and probably inadvertently caused a lot more. You know, going through a trial like this probably caused a lot more. I'm afraid I've had no choice but to have him drugged. My plan went well until it's just not good, is it, though? Look at this man. Clay's murder, huh? Um... After the culprit made their escape, I switched the launch pads back. I did it in such a way that no one would find out. But after all that effort, Tran is dead. And the hat too is destroyed. And the hope capsule which had returned to us only recently was lost in the blast. You can get the like with the hope capsule itself. You mean does he mean this capsule? But it's gonna be returned to you, right? My home, the center of the cosmos. My beautiful cosmos space center is done for. He cares a lot about this place, like he adores it. He really does adore it. Wait, what do you mean by the Hope Castle was lost in the blast? Yeah, exactly. Like, I thought we, it's going to be brought back for evidence. Yeah. I thought that the Hope's Capsule was found at the crime scene with Mr. Tran. I just brought back by, I just been brought back by the Hope Space Probe, but with the asteroid samples inside, it had just been brought back. So what kind of samples are they? What's in them? The samples are scheduled for analysis in the near future. We haven't had time since they just came back the day before Tran's murder. The castle was being held in a safe in Launchpad 1, but I gave it to Tran for the instant so it would be destroyed in the explosion. The idea was with the safe in Tran's possession, he could make it look like he rescued it during the stage miraculous escape. So everything was thought out. But our precious research materials ended up lost in the explosion anyway. But I thought Clay was supposed to keep it safe. Yeah, what happened though? Like, how, like, did you... You must understand. The launch pad explosion wasn't the one the capsule was lost to. It was lost after the police confiscated his evidence. <gasps> oh, okay, okay. 
It was the court bombing from the other day. Yes, okay, yeah. The cops was there in the courtroom as evidence and was blown to smithereens. Yet another case, uh, yet another casualty of the blast. Well, I think the culprit may have known about the switching of the launch pads. What? How? The police found a wiretapping device during their investigation today. A bug aboard my battleship, a tap on my advanced communication systems. That's crazy. So someone someone from the inside did this. A wire on that phone? Yes. A wire on this ready phone will stop talking to it. Well, they would have taken it out. I used this phone to give instructions to my staff about the launchpad switch. Just a, a few select members who knew about the plan. Just before the incident, staff members were coming in and out of launchpad one. The culprit probably slipped in with them amid the confusion. And planted the bomb then. Yes, if they're tapping your phone, they definitely could pull something like that off. So you really think the same spies behind the incident and the one seven years ago? I'm sure of it. Then this spy must be the phantom prosecutor Blackwell has been chasing. Oh my god. Oh my lord. Prosecutor Black will tell me once. The hunt I've been uh, on for the Phantom of seven years past continues even still. For starters, that case happened right here at the very Space Center, too. So you can find this Phantom. That's right, we can clear Athena's name. And then there's the matter of the Prosecutor Black will, too. What about him? Well, if the culprit seven years ago is the same person in, uh, as in the current incident, it would mean Prosecutor Blackwell is innocent. That is still an if, though. We saw him raise the sword in the vision, though, so I wonder what's happening there. Unless it was for defense, but I don't know. That would be crazy if we got him, like, off scot-free. Like, if he was free, like, if, if, like... I wonder how dangerous that guy would be in court without handcuffs. Well, like, Trucy, you know what? You saying it this way is the cutest thing I've ever seen in my life. I wonder how dangerous we this little bop she's doing. Um, yeah, like, it would be insane to get Blackwell out of cuffs forever and then have him sue the legal system. We'll, we'll defend him in court for that. Your Honor, Mr. Blackwell is looking for 10 hawks. But if we're going to go on a ghost hunt, count me in. Yeah, Trucy. What a great companion to have all the time, right? Ah, it's all over for me. Spin, spin, whirl, whirl, I'm done for. The center of the cosmos is domed. Do you think it's going to be alright, Daddy? Well, at least he'll be in a good company. There must be planets out there you can spin with. Which reminds me, I'd like to delve a little deeper into the Hat 1 mission, too. If you want to learn more, start with the Space Museum. That's where the Hat 1, uh, there's a Hat 1 exhibit there. I don't mind me, I'll just keep spinning around the only cosmos of falls. It's like he's achieved spiritual enlightenment or something. I'm sure he'll stop when he gets dizzy. Let's go visit the space museum. Yeah, no, I, I totally, totally appreciate. Okay, let's move right away because I know for a fact you guys will feel sick as well. December twentieth, Cosmo Space Center, Space Museum. I can't believe there's a there, right now. Not only we we are fighting for Athena, we're fighting for Apollo in a way too, and we're fighting for Blackwell. It's a very different energy than we had before uh, with these, these cases. Let's see, where's the exhibit on the launch seven years ago? I think it's over there, as we saw a glimpse of it last time. There's the Hat 1 exhibit. Oh, look at that photo of the team. It's still such a great photo. Wait, I just noticed the aura is standing over uh, Ponko, and he's all bandaged because she's been beating the head off him. Leave Pon Justice for Ponko. Or does she know she usually beats up Klonko, so why is P Ponko? Does she beat up Ponko too? Justice for Klonko. There's Clay and Mr. Starbuck, director Cosmos, Aura Blackwell, and even Ponko. This is a beautiful picture. Starbuck actually looks really handsome here. i never seen the woman on the right before. Yes, me neither. Everyone looks so happy. Well, except for director Cosmos. Well, he's being his stalwart self. Let's check out the newspaper article too. Music is so freaking amazing. And there's a photo of the Hope's scarce, uh, spare, uh, space probe. I guess Sony Natural doesn't talk about the murder or, or the sabotage. They really were keeping a secret, just like the director said. 
Daddy, take a look at this jacket. Yeah. It must be the Hat One Team's uniform jacket, but there's a rip in the side of it. I always wondered about this. It's the same design as the one Apollo was wearing that belonged to Clay. Yeah. So sweet. He was wearing it like, like you know, when like your um your partner gives you their jacket. Actually, jacket worn by Hat One Team members. This is not a replica, huh? I wonder if it was Mr. Starbucks. A newspaper clipping a photo of people involved with the launch and a jacket of one of them wore. Hello? Who's this? Who's this? <gasps> Juniper! Miss Woods, what brings you here? Yeah, what's happening, Juniper? I... I heard Tina got arrested, so I... I've been looking for you, Mr. Wright. Oh, so she... Actually, incredibly smart, Juniper. I thought you might be here at the scene, and she went to, like, law school as well, so she's like, okay, where would they be here? You must be worried, but rest assured, I'm gonna do my very best to defend her. Oh, look at that, Annie. Look at that the little hide in the hat. Tina going to such a hard time. Oh, she doesn't lose heart. Tina, you know how strong that girl is, but we have to be here for her as well, because even the strongest deserve, like, a moment of sadness, you know? Not deserve, you know, that sounds so weird, but I mean, you, you deserve to to feel your own feelings and allow to feel your own feelings, right? And we'll be there for her. Deserve sounds so bad. You deserve to feel sadness, but I meant it more just like you're allowed to. Uh, even just coming back to this place must have been really difficult for her. Yeah. Huh? You mean the Cosmo Space Center? So here we go. Yeah, coming back to this place is what, what do we want to know. You didn't know? She used to live here. When she was a little girl, I did not know she lived here. She did? No, I didn't know. I did not know this. No wonder she knew so much. Yeah, she was like, like it was like, like an, an old friend she was going into this place. Like, so obviously like there's something here, but. Miss Woods, could you tell me more in detail? So, Athena lived here. That's, again, she kept that secret, which means that I'm guessing has something to relate to that cutscene we keep seeing of her covered in blood at the trial, scared. So I wonder if it is a situation where she just wanted to move on from whatever happened here. So that's why she didn't tell us. I don't think it's a thing where like, why didn't Athena tell us? She didn't, she felt she could, she wasn't comfortable enough to tell us yet. Athena in the space center. Athena's mom worked here. Oh, okay. If I remember right, she was a doctor of psychology or something like that. Why was a psychology specialist working at the space research facility? I don't really know. But I do know that she lived and worked here. So Athena lived here too. So it was far from Athena's first time here. I wonder why she didn't mention it. Yet yeah, it's clearly some bad memories. She probably didn't want to talk about it. Yep. This place is connected to a very sad memory for her. Oh my god, man. The, you know, it's like, we have to dwell deeper into this stuff. I just don't, like... Thought of Athena ever being sad is upsetting. A sad memory? Can you tell me about it? There was a terrible incident here. It was seven years ago. The same time frame as the Hat 1 launch. Athena's mom in the robotics lab. She was... Oh my god, it was her that was murdered. This is not good. What? Oh my god, this is not good. That means that... That means that there's a... She's been fighting up against Blackwell all this time, who is the presumed killer of... By some people, the presumed killer of her mother. Jesus Christ, after it happened, Thena stopped coming to school. Poor Thena, and all this time, she never let on at all. She is the most empathetic and sweetest person ever. And she had all this behind her. Usually that's the way. I was so worried about her. I came here so many times hoping to see her. Oh my god, it's, her mother was murdered. I never saw her again. Oh no. Oh no. After a while, we started exchanging letters. But I didn't get to see her face to face for seven long... There it is, seven long years again. And so the first time you'd seen her in seven years was during the... Like, how crazy is that, not seeing your friend for seven years? 
That's right. I was so surprised. This is such a turn. Like, she was not. She was like a completely different person. So cheerful and happy. So when I said that this freaking case was personal, it's personal on a level that I didn't even realize. What a song. So rough for Athena. Young Athena. She is still very young, but younger Athena. Her freaking mother, man. What was Athena like as a child? She was very sensitive and kind. She didn't talk very much. She liked to draw and paint at home. This song is incredible. Absolutely incredible. Holy hell. That's completely different from the Athena we know now. I can't even picture it. Yeah, this is Athena who will like run out the door if you if if she needs something. No, she won't even tell you. She never left the space center much because she's very sensitive to other people's emotions. Man, maybe this is this a lot deeper than we thought it was with the psychological thing she's able to do with this empathy. When she went to crowded places, she'd get dizzy from all the emotion. Oh my god. It must be hard to hear people's hearts as well as their voices. Oh my god, no! Look at her little tired eyes! And she always wore headphones. She always wore these big, heavy-looking headphones. She said her mother made them for her as part of her research. Athena. They're nice headphones, but like... She had to block out all of these, like, all of these thoughts? That must have been so painful for our girl. I wonder what kind of research it was. Look at her little tired eyes, look at them. Because of her special ability, Thena couldn't handle being in school very often. I was always out sick because of my weak constitution. And I was always sick because of my weak constitution. I mean, that's why I became such good friends. Yeah. I can't, I'm never, I'm never going to get over Athena's little tired eyes. It's clear that she went through so much and those headphones are just like a little saving grace for her. We used to play together at the Space Center a lot. It brings back my, oh, just the idea of her playing together, like her with her headphones on and her tired eyes and playing with Juniper in the Space Center makes me absolutely want to die. I feel so bad. Sounds like Athena's mother played a big role here at the Space Center. My daddy showed that picture. Atta girl. Good idea. Atta girl. He's so proud of this girl. So show the picture. Holy... Like, this is such a crazy thing to drop on us. Young Athena is like the sweetest... This picture? The sweetest girl in the world and the old Athena is so sweet as well and it's just like so hard to picture her being like in any way upset I would never let it happen Miss Woods could you take a look at this for me yeah look at this oh look that's Athena's mom holy hell all this time we were looking right at Athena's mother the woman on the far right and the one in the kimono. That's Dr. Meta Sykes. Athena's mother's murderer. Did it by any chance have any connection to the Hat One launch? It happened at the same time. Well, yes, it did. As I recall, it happened on the day before the launch. Yeah. Well, we didn't know that aspect, but just I suspect we happened. To, it, we we kind of pit, like pieced that together. That was the worst. One of my staff members was murdered. This is so rough. This is so freaking rough. Especially when it happens to one of our own. You know? So this is the murder Director Cosmos was talking about. Does that mean that the crime prosecutor Blackwell was convicted of was the murder of Athena's freaking mother? Is the murder of... Yes, the Athena was... Oh my god. There's a chance that someone was connected to the current case. There is. Thank you for all your help, Miss Woods. Miss Wood, Juniper, thank you so freaking much. But holy hell, that was so much to think about all in one go. I'm please not trying not to worry. 
I won't let anything happen to Athena. Yeah, we won't. Thank you, Mr. Wright. I know you take good care of her. So we need to investigate the robotics lab and to also talk to Athena. Yeah, we need to we need to check on Athena as soon as possible. We got our place full, Daddy. I hope we can fit it all in before the day is through. The detention center first, then we have to see Athena before visiting hours are over. Okay, great, great. 100%. Go to see Athena. Make sure we don't miss out on it. December 20th, detention center visitor's room. Oh, it's Fulbright. Well, if it is Mr. Lawyer, fancy being you. We need to, like, pause for a second. Because, like, I love Fulbright with all my heart. I love you. But I think we need to talk. Maybe we don't. Maybe, maybe we need to let her rest for a bit. But what I'm just thinking about is just, like, this whole time Athena's been in the courtroom across from someone that is presumed to be the murderer of her mother. And that incident, of course, affected her so much that she didn't even see her friends for seven years. It's like a loss of, like, a lot, many years of your life. And, like, I'm so glad she found us in any way. But now she's going to have to go through all of this again. Horrible. How are you doing, Fulbright? How are you? Fancy meeting you here. Well, hello, Detective Fulbright. Here on business? To tell the truth, I'm here to interview Ted tonight. Thank God someone thought of it. The one behind the courtroom bombing incident? He suddenly said he's ready to tell the truth about that case. And what he's saying was so incredible. And just to come over, uh, I just had to come over uh, to, hear, to hear more. Incredible, what is he saying? Why aren't you hanging around here for yourself? Really? Us? Are you sure? Ah, I gave you my special permission. Here comes the... Wait, can we see Athena first, though? I desperately want to see Athena. Man, this guy... This guy should have been in the courtroom that day as well. In the Yuri Cosmos case. I understand that, like... We can't convict him any more than we already did. Well, we probably could. You definitely could. But, like, he does need to answer some questions. I'm so glad Fulbright's awesome enough to, like... I know he, I guess he got a call that he wanted to, add, uh, to say to tell the truth. But still, Fulbright is very smart to pick up on this and go right there. Because 100% he needs to talk about this stuff. What nerve you have to come here? What nerve? You ta you're talking about nerve. Dude. I know, I know you're not talking about nerve. You're here to laugh at me, I suppose. Sure, I will. Like I waste my breath on you. Yeah, Phoenix. What a man is Phoenix. After all, you're the one who assaulted Paul and put him in the hospital. Exactly. Violence, no. Question, okay. What? No violence? Too bad Apollo didn't get the chance to say, to say that before you attacked him. I, I... Fine. Then just answer this to me, Mr. Tenace. What is this truth about yours, uh, about the courtroom you blew up? No, I didn't do it. I didn't blow up the courtroom. So it wasn't you? When I killed Detective Arm, there was another person in the room. Oh, Jesus Christ. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. You know that thing in your head with, like, Phoenix, right? Where it's like, I'm saying, oh, no, because, like, how do we, how are we going to do this? But it's like, there's also an, oh, yeah, because, like, the story's about to get thicker. What are you talking about? Who else could have been there? I saw it, I tell you. I saw someone's hand as they were sealing the remote to a switch. This person was there and witnessed the murder I committed. Bro, you killed. You killed this detective. What? I don't know who it was. But that's who blew up the courtroom. You expect us to buy that? I... Here's the thing. Especially in, like, if they're... This is Japan-America. That's what they go on with, this, with the, the English version of this game. It's Japan, America, where they're in. He murdered someone, and it's been proven, and it's cold blood, and it was a detective. This dude is not getting out of prison, ever. He has no reason to lie. <laughs> he really does not. Easy there, Trucy. Yeah, you expect us to buy that. Yeah. Because the first time we said easy day, Trucy, I was like, did I miss some dialogue where she said something crazy? Trucy, you, you say, you say whatever you want to, Trucy. I don't see any cyclops. I thought I, like, skipped something by accident. I don't see any cyclops. So I guess he must not be lying. Pardon me. I got a little carried away. 
but I'm telling you the truth. I did not detonate that bomb. And also, like, can I just say, Trucy, like, getting so frustrated because this is the man that did hit Apollo over the head. That sent him to the hospital. And this is what I love about Trucy. Trucy has murderous intent in the sweetest way possible, right? Do you guys agree? I, I would agree. I would agree with myself. And there you have it. We can't exactly know his claims, of course. So we're doing a follow-up. Fulbright, you're 100% correct. We're even analyzing the bomb itself and what's left of it. Jesus. We haven't found any new facts yet, though. Wow. They laid it all out piece by piece. Oh, look at all those beautiful little pieces. I wish I could have them. <laughs> oh, looks like his geek switch has been activated. Oh my god, it's back in it's back in the core record. It's back. Well, I hope you're ready for Prosecutor Blackwell's special brand of questioning. Ah, uh, anything but that. No, you deserve it. You deserve it. I'm afraid I have to be off now, too. No problem, Fulbright. Thank you so much. I was just have to question Miss Sykes. Uh, you going to see Athena now? That's right. Oh, did you folks come to see her? Sorry but for the trouble, but you could come back later? Well, off I go. Okay, we're going to have to come back later. What bad timing. Looks like we'll have to wait until after her questioning is over to see her. After we came all this way, too. I guess it's back to the Space Center. Let's go check out the robotics lab, Daddy. All right, sounds like a plan. Uh, Trucy, 100%. Again, I love her murderous intent in every situation. Her defense of the people she loves is also really great, too. Um, Fulbright, again, I'm not upset with Fulbright taking this, this this question. Even though I want to see Athena, like, I've come to, I've come to trust Fulbright quite a bit, and I think he's actually pretty good. Um, so, like, I don't feel bad about him questioning Athena, because I think he's actually going to be very fair about it, too. Uh, would you, I think you guys would agree with that also. Um, he's been very fair with us, I think, throughout this whole case, especially lately. Uh, but for now, guys, that's going to end the video here. We're going to keep going with the next one. This has been a crazy episode. Uh, mostly, I think, on the Athena side, this is going to be a very, very Athena, Apollo heavy story. It has to be. This is so personal for the both of them. Now, both of, like, someone close to both of them, obviously in different cases, uh, best friend and mother murdered on two separate hat one hat project hat one and hat two both of their uh you know loved ones i could say were murdered at the same time uh, it's all gonna be also gonna be very personal to blackwell now that he's like gonna be like one of the people accused in that original murder and it's personal to us as well like our our true our athena and our apollo are indisposed uh, thank you so much so much for watching thank you for supporting the series and thank you to tie fire 2 jamie bull Janet the banana the ghost of inazuma uh, Felicious Felix, Yuld, Radish, Anusa, Shibata Bread, Malcolm Day, Death Trap, and Lynx Marky, and guys, I'll see you all very soon. Bye bye. <laughs>